Yo, yo, yo. So I'm going to kind of wing this one. Um, my parents are going to be coming over later, so got to get the house ready and stuff. Just to hang out with them, spend some time. Uh, we'll dive into the AMC chart as well as the SPY chart uh, for the day and see what we think. Uh, AMC, big down day today, about 9%. You closed at right around that 1450 level that we've been talking about for a while. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we obviously discussed that my, uh, my bias was that this push down here to 1425, uh, at the time was the bottom for AMC was my conviction, but obviously, uh, you know, it, it all depends on, on the elements that, that happen, uh, from here on out. Right. So let's look at where AMC stands in the macro patterns that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, we have this falling wedge that we've been drawing for a while based on the bottom of June 2nd, the bottom on July 19th, and the bottom on August 5th. Um, and now you have pretty much broken completely through uh, this support line that you had here. You had had a couple closes above it, uh, but now you've broken completely through and closed below it. So I'm not saying that this invalidates the uh, assortment of falling wedges that we've been wa watching because y a lot of times with falling wedges, you will have this fake out to the downside. So let me just show you an example of this. Um, perhaps back here would be a good example. Uh, you would have been drawing a falling wedge like this, right? This would be the downtrend just to clarify. You would have been drawing it perhaps like this and you had a fake out to the upside or maybe maybe further along like this you would have done it obviously i'm just winging it here okay um, but basically you can have this break below the trend line before your your ultimate reversal um and i think that even even the one bef uh, after the run-up in may i mean after the run-up in september i'm sorry uh did have a fake out to the downside like this, see how you broke down below, and then you uh, eventually just shot right back up. So it is possible for you to have this fake out, and this fake out can last a couple days. Um, but you definitely want to see, you know, the sort of uh, volume supported move to the upside. Obviously, we've been talking about um, the possibilities of pushing further down and what those levels would look like. I mean, look, you're sitting on key support right here, okay? As we've said, this 1450 level was the previous resistance, and then the next level um, before the, Jan the June run, I should say, and then the next level down would be this, like, 12-ish dollar range, okay? So if you break below this 1450 and you hold below, and what I mean by that when I say that, I mean, that's just my terminology, like what I say kind of in my head when I'm <laughs> when I'm thinking about these things. But if you break down below here, right, you break this 1450 and then you come back and you retest it and you fail and make a lower low, I'm fully expecting $12, okay? Uh, if I haven't been clear about that in the past, that's your clarity. Uh, full disclosure, well, first of all, none of this is financial advice as always. Um, and also, you know, as far as the narratives surrounding... Um, if the market crashes, AMC is going to pop. Uh, if that was to happen, it would be a very bloody scenario for AMC still. Um, it wouldn't be this sort of uh, just inverse correlation where suddenly AMC just starts rocketing off while the uh, general market is just crashing. That is not what it would look like. Um, if that, that narrative of like margin calls because the general market crashes happens, if that's true, you're going to see a big shove down for AMC. It's going to be very painful, and then you'll see uh, upside. But as of right now, I mean, where you're standing right now, I mean, <laughs> to be honest with you, it's kind of funny because we, we have compared it previously to this little... If, like, when we were up here in, like, the $20 to $25 range, I, I would say, if we went down and visited this $14.50 region, we would expect it to look something like the post buy button correction um, if it was to turn around there. And it's oddly enough, you're hanging right above the 618 with that buy button correction. 
Um, that's the correlation we've been making for a while. If you do the same thing here, uh, you're hanging right above that 618. So this is like your, you know, I mean, this is your key zone, guys. Like, especially for fractal theory at this point. Like, if you're looking at, like, anything right now, fractal likewise and i'm not saying that i necessarily subscribe to that 100 percent um but this is definitely the most interesting thing to be looking at in my opinion from that from that angle right now because it does it does look like a similar move um thus far and i, I mean it's not perfect but you get the idea you have this this kind of drive down in price this bounce up and then maybe you you just kind of continue down along this trend um until you until you eventually bounce up that could be i mean look if that's what would what were to happen if that situation were to play out right this would be a perfect kind of falling wedge you fake to the downside and then you come back you retest it and then you break out to the upside so i'd say you know everything depending on what the volume looks like I mean, to be honest with you, uh, from a macro fractal standpoint, if if this doesn't play out, if you don't hang above this region uh, on this chart, then I I am completely out of uh, fractals. I mean, maybe you could you could even play it out like this. Mm, not really. I mean, you, I guess you could say like this. Yeah, I mean this this is pretty pretty uh pretty reasonable so maybe you do this and you kind of hang in this zone and, and this is that previous zone where you right you hopped up you got rejected out of you hopped up you got rejected down but you eventually held this twelve dollars before you blast it off perhaps you could have a similar scenario play out um totally possible but yeah those are like that's like the key support and resistance again i don't i don't think that the falling wedge is invalidated yet um, but if you, if you break down and yeah, I mean, if you continue lower, right, if you create lower lows out of it, then I would say it's invalidated. And, uh, these patterns, they're validated by volume and, and break, right? So the falling wedge isn't going to be a completely valid falling wedge until it breaks out, retests, and then breaks to the upside. Um, that's, that's how a falling wedge works. It's just a speculative pattern up until that point. But I mean, you guys understand that I've been talking about that for a while, but, uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much it when it comes to AMC. Um, look, I, I'll tell you straight up, like, and I hope that it's been clear throughout this process, but my goal with the channel has not been um, to sit here and convince you to hold something. Uh, it's not here to convince you to buy something, anything like that. And I get a lot of criticism, like a lot of comments and people on Twitter that'll that'll be like, yeah, uh people like you, you know, cause people to hold this thing all the way to the dirt, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's just for me, it, you know, honestly, I think that, I think that what, what is, if anything is causing that, and I'm not saying that this play is over, by the way, uh, I'm just referencing that, that information. If anything is causing that, it's more of the MOAS, this thing's going to go to a million dollars, yada, yada, narratives that are out there. Um, and honestly, I think that those are less about creators because um, I don't really see a lot of creators, uh, well, at least creators that I pay attention to and watch, um, and the ones that I see get criticized all the time. I don't see them really, and yeah, I don't really see them promoting that sort of thing. I, I don't even see them promoting um, four digits um, for the most part. I mean, some of them, yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, it's funny because pe there are people like Lou that are out there who basically, and I'm, look, you know, Lou's cool or whatever, and he can do whatever he wants, and I'm not offended by him, and I'm not offended by any of this stuff, but he can basically just say anything that he wants to, and his audience pretty much just protects anything that he says, says that it's the gospel, trusts everything that he says. Um, but, I mean, I don't think that he's actually ever proven anything about any of the claims that he's made. Um, I don't think he's actually physically proven anything. And he's essentially like, it, yeah, the market's going to crash. Don't worry about it. You know, it doesn't affect us. You know, it's kind of been his narrative. And it's just like, okay, man, like, cool. Um, like, he is, you know, he and people like him that, that kind of subscribe to the, it's inevitable, it's going to six figures per share or whatever. Like, I think that that is, 
where those kinds of uh, messages are what's causing the most pain for retail right now. And I'm not saying that those messages are wrong. I'm just saying that, like, you know, to me, that kind of seems like the uh, what we should be trying to uh, pay a little bit more attention to. And I think that educating people in the market is the best way for them to understand their position uh, from whatever aspect that they want to understand it from. So um, whatever, everybody can do whatever they want to do, but that's just kind of my take on it. I know that's kind of like a random rant. I kind of, you know, the technicals have pretty much been the same for the past few days. We're really just looking for a decision to either side uh, with this thing as far as wedge goes. But yes, as long, uh, as far as I can see, this is a clean break of the bottom of this wedge. I know that there are a few different ways that you can draw it if you want, but that was a more macro take that I was going for. Um, I mean, you could say, let's see, you could say that, you know, you're being supported here. Yeah, and I'd say that's valid. So you could say this is support, support, or, and then you could have a potential bounce from here. Um, and then even if you bounce from here and you get rejected down, you can still go lower and still maintain that you're in that wedge. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much AMC. I think that we should take a look at the broader market just so that we can understand, um, what's exactly going on with that right now. Generally speaking with SPY, uh, because SPY is having a great effect on AMC's price. And, uh, as a lot of people have been pointing out, it is a little bit more related to the downside. Um, but the general strength of the broader market is going to assist AMC in, in having just like one less thing to deal with. Right. So like, if the general market is dumping, like if the general market is pumping, a stock can still go down, okay, based on its individual uh, case. But if the if the market is dumping, it's very hard for any stock to really to really succeed in that kind of environment because uh, what what occurs is basically people become more risk off, especially institutions. They want to take their money out of the game so that they they aren't uh, putting themselves at any any unnecessary risk if the general market is gonna is gonna go down lower um so anyway uh right now i mean this does kind of resemble an accumulation uh kind of thing but what i've been noticing a lot whenever i'm paying attention to these and trying to determine whether they're accumulation or um or distribution is i look at them and i say you know what if you if you split this thing in half like what where is it spending most of its time you know um, and that'll give you a good indication of whether distribution is happening or accumulation is happening. Um, and so in this shorter time frame, I, I'm pretty undecided on it. I, I feel like this, you know, for SPY does look like it's kind of, it's just hanging higher. And, and what does that mean, right? It means like the more influential bodies, right? Like the institutions, et cetera, are trying to create these pumps, so that people will think, oh, look, we're we're going back to normal. So then they can sell them stock at higher prices and then send the price lower down. Um, so those are just the, the kinds of things that I've been watching. Uh, it looks like this 433 kind of 67 level is going to be pretty key here uh, just to see. Because now SPY has gotten rejected here a bunch of times. And obviously this is post-market now. Um, but I've been playing the bear side of, of SPY uh, as I've detailed in a few of my videos. Just because, you know, I mean, you're you're in a bear trend. Um, I would say probably the best way to look at it is just look at it. If you go to the four-hour chart and you just kind of attach this line to here and see that clearly uh, price is getting rejected down here. Again, today, I mean, I'm not going to make another video uh, kind of detailing this, but today I did uh, buy puts again at the top of the day I can I mean I can show you the tweet if you want me to or you can go find it yourself um but basically the reason that I did that was because the volume just is not there right now whenever bulls are trying to make a push up and I had this shorter term uh bear trend I think I drew it like this and it would have been right here uh let's go I mean I guess I'll go find it so you guys can see this is a pretty cool um Pretty cool feature when it comes to trading view is oh I said I bought more puts so let's see where exactly on the chart we were 
Yep. So go to the one minute. You can see that, yeah, I tweeted that out at the exact top. And it was just based on uh, its relationship with this with this trend. Uh, it looked distribution-y to me. And then you kind of saw that the volume was decreasing as the price was increasing. And I just, you know, to me, that's just kind of a signal like, hey, you're approaching this trend line. The volume's decreasing as the price is increasing. Probably going to see a dump. And then you did. Um, so, yeah, relatively simple trade. Um, I know a lot of people did well uh, based on this this tweet, which I'm not really trying to get people to just trade off of my tweets, like I said before, but, you know, hey, might as well just kind of put my thoughts out there. You know, can't hurt. But yeah, so you had this uh, this rising wedge as well. You broke out to the downside. Really what ended up happening is you kind of had a retest moment here, and then you got rejected down. Um, and now, I mean, this looks like... See, this is one of those examples right here, right? Like, this looks like accumulation, like a Wyckoff accumulation schematic. Um, but it's like all of the red candles are just like, like to me, it just looks like the selling volume is just overpowering the buying volume right here. So um, that could be indicative of like a fake out or, or whatever. Or, you know, I could be completely wrong and this thing could just like blast off from here. Oh my goodness. That is not what I was trying to do. Like it did yesterday. Dude, yesterday, futures killed me, bro. Like, I was so mad because futures were dumping all night, and I was like, oh, my goodness, my puts are going to be so valuable. And then it just, like, <laughs> it rocketed up, and then you opened all the way up at, like, 440 or whatever on SPY. Um, What was it? Yeah, like 438, 440. And then whenever it did this, you know, I was sitting there like, hmm. And then I saw this, I was like, I'm going to buy more puts, whatever. <laughs> so that's kind of, uh, that's that with SPY. But yeah, I mean, generally speaking, if I'm being honest, I, you know, I am kind of leaning towards now because um, this is the lowest close for AMC yet. I And, and also I think SPY uh, had its lowest daily close today in this trend. Let's see. Yeah, so this is the lowest that SPY is closed. You're getting a little post-market bounce right now, but SPY has been doing crazy, you know, futures have been doing crazy things to uh, lately, especially. So definitely think that you're still in a bear trend until you until you break out of this. Where are we in relation to it? Yeah, so we're making our way up now. Um, well, we're kind of, we're fighting with this 433.70 kind of line. Um, yeah, but I mean, you know, SPY could totally just like, have a run up again here again test is 440 and then get rejected back down so just be on the lookout for that um but yeah that's pretty much the video honestly i'm i'm sort of bearish on spy and that's kind of making me be like okay you know it's possible that we see more downside for amc so uh and i know that's a meme that i always say that uh that you know it's possible that you see more downside but this channel is about probabilities possibilities uh it's not about trying to predict the future uh, it's about showing you guys kind of how I come to my own conclusions when it comes to what I think the price is going to do. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see if we, we can see any, any trend line. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. You draw from here. And you pull down to meet right here. You're just below this trend. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I kind of just like chart on my phone all day. And then like whenever the day ends, you know, I come do my video. Usually I do this beforehand, but I'll just like sit or, sit here and mess around with the chart. Try and see if I can find anything else I'm, I might have missed before. Mm, nothing really crazy there. Maybe if we try and draw, like, okay, what is this? Support, right? Okay. I kind of like this. So... And then let's turn the wicks off just so that you guys can see what I'm trying to illustrate a little bit better. 
so if you do body only, right, for the accumulation that occurred from March to May of 2021, it's going to be May. You do have a perfect touch point right here uh, that you came down and you closed on right here, this this 1450. Um, now let's see if it has any other relevance. You kind of had a bull trap scenario here, bull trap scenario here. Um, and then nothing really other than that. See with wicks on. Yeah, so you can see resistance. Boom, resistance, resistance. You break out, retest, and then you have a break up. Retest, try to break up again and get rejected down. Same thing here, resistance, resistance, break down. Resistance, break up, find it as support, break up, get rejected. Try and find it as, uh, go back up, test it, becomes resistance again, you get sent down. Um, so yeah, I'd say it's a valid trend line. So there's one that you can potentially watch going into tomorrow. I mean, honestly, you're really just looking for that volume, guys. Like, you you got to see. I think you probably see a bounce tomorrow. So then I think that I am saying that I think you see a bounce on SPY tomorrow as well. <coughs> because I don't think that AMC bounces without SPY, if I'm being honest. Like, in a significant way. Um, But yeah, so that would be the kind of scenario that you're looking for. When it comes to that. Let's see, you did Elliott wave, and you wanted to make this an A, B, C correction, which would include five wave, two, three, four, five. I mean, you could make a pretty good case for that, actually, um, and then. Let's see, is this a five wave? One, mm, two, three. Okay. And then you have the Fibonacci as well. So you draw from here to here. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty that's a pretty interesting uh interesting way to look at the chart. on the all-time bottom. Oh. Yeah, nothing really. This one right here. On the bottom of your 416. So your next level, if you were measuring this, it would be 1170, which kind of aligns with the uh, the $12. But yeah, so th those are all the different ways that... <laughs> I would perhaps be looking at this. If you measure the Fibonacci down here to the bottom, there's a golden pocket. Uh, the 52 is like a golden pocket. And then obviously this one. Oh, this one was a golden pocket as well. Hmm. So let's see. We'll measure this one. This one got rejected down by the 0.5 Fibonacci. Um, and then well, this one, extension now, which, wait, no, wait, oh, yeah, 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 let's see, this is probably a 786, it looks like, yeah, so 786, you see here, you get rejected down. And then, what is the extension point on this? 1580 and then 1340. So those are some, some other levels that you could be looking out for as well. Maybe the 1340 could catch it. But yeah, you're really just looking for that reaction um, from a volume perspective. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it uh, as far as I can tell. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed the video and, uh, make sure you like, and subscribe and until next time, wait, somebody, somebody had a request uh, me to sing something. Oh shit. I can't remember, dude. What's spy doing right now? 
you know, you're still holding holding this uh, 433, 40. But yeah, so I would watch, uh, what I use is SPX 500 USD on TradingView whenever I want to watch futures. So if you want to see what uh, SPY is doing overnight, that's what I would use. Um, and just, yeah, keep track of it. See if it comes up and tests this uh, this upper resistance line right here. That'll give you an idea of where the market's going to go tomorrow. But uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day. Peace.